cloud. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning, I don't remember. So uh, it's, it's midday somewhere around the earth. So welcome, we're here together uh, to discuss and give details about the plugin health score and displaying the, pl the plugin health score. So my name is John Mark Mason. I am um, org admin uh, for Google Summer of Code with Jenkins. And we have also Alyssa and Bruno who are helping me uh, doing that. And the two key persons of this session here uh, are uh, Adrian, Adrien Le Charpentier, it's a French name. And we have uh, Jake, Jake Leon, uh, who is in the United States, who is also a key actor in this project. So thank you very much for having joined us uh, in this discussion. Uh, we'll have, uh, we'll go the two projects one after the other. I'll give the word to Adrian and Jake. I don't know how they organize themselves. So first, a presentation of the project so that we get introduced and then we'll have a Q&A session. Now, in order that the maximum time we're going to spend on these two projects uh, is one hour. So on the top of the hour, so that will be uh, 10 p.m., uh, half, half past 10 p.m. Uh, in India. I will call it for a stop. And uh, one project, maximum half an hour, or I'll start giving signs uh, when we're getting out of bounds. Uh, there. This was for the introduction. And I'll give then the word to Adrian. Okay, so uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, it's nice to see uh, so many potential, uh, so, so many people interesting in, in those project ideas. So uh, let's start with the prob addition um, idea. Um, um, so if you are not familiar with, let, let's start with a plugin else scoring uh, project. If you are not familiar with it, the idea behind that project is to provide key information to plugin maintainers, but also to plugin users of Jenkins ecosystem um, about the else uh, state of each and every plugin that is uh, available on, that are available in the uh, update center. The idea is to find uh, key details that we can measure and that we can assess to determine whether the plugin might need some uh, attention or is in go in good shape overall, or is in perfect perfect shape all around. So uh, that the idea of um, the 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 project and um, concerning it, we have two ideas for JSOC. One is about um, adding new probs because the plugin the the project is um, uh, using two key feature which are um, uh, probs and scoring uh, implementation. The probs are there to um, gather data about a plugin. They are not here to make any judgment. I had the question quite a lot on, on Gitter and I thought that was uh, clear on the documentation, but my bad, it's not. So the, the probs are here to fetch data on key details about plugins. So, for example, we are currently gathering, uh, uh, we have a prob to gather the number of installation of a specific of, of a specific plugin. We have, thank you, Jake. We have a prob, the JEP229 is about the um, uh, uh, usage of said, uh, said uh, JEP, which is a continuous delivery. Uh, we well, have depend about and so on and so on. Yes. What is a JEP? Uh, JEP is, um, so in Java, it's uh, uh, a JEP is in Jenkins an announcement proposal. Jenkins an announcement proposal. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, 
And uh, so we have here a list, the list of currently implemented probs. And the idea is to add new ones because we want to have more uh, details about plugins to, to make sure that uh, the score we compute for each plugins is as close to the reality as uh, we, we can. And so um, the probs, uh, so we need to, to get more data about, about each plugin. And once we have the data, we have scoring processes. Um, no, the, the link on, yeah, that one. So the scoring processes are in fact where we make a judgment call on each plugin. We are using the probe results that are generated by the uh, application of a probe on a plugin. And we, uh, the, the, uh, the scoring processes can use one or multiple um, probe results to uh, generate a score uh, on, on, a, on a plugin. And all those scores are then, we have an average of all those scores and they they make the uh, the score of a specific plugin. So for example, here Jake is going to uh, the Git uh, page and we can see the score is of 96 out of 100 because um, the plugin doesn't, uh, it only has a 0.75 uh, on the repository configuration. If you if we scroll down, we can see all the probe results for each uh, of the probes that are implemented and have been run on the plugin. So we can see pull, the number of pull requests, the Jenkins versions, uh, whether or not the plugin is deprecated. Sorry for that. Uh, the last commit date, um, the JEP229, and so on and so on. So the main the the idea of the main sub, of the first object for this Google Summer of Code is to add more probes and make sure that and use those probes results inside uh, scoring processes. So the scoring processes the, the 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 probes can contribute to existing scoring scoring implementation. One of those four, for example. Or they can, or we can create a new scoring processes, a new scoring scoring implementation uh, to use those new probs to illustrate a specific apps, uh, um, aspect of a plugin. Um, so the, for example, the deprecation uh, uh, scoring implementation is only using the deprecation prob result because. That makes sense. It's a one-one uh, uh, relationship, but the scoring, the repository configuration is using four and soon enough five uh, probe results because in the repository configuration we want to assess the presence of Jing inside the usage of depend about and either is the usage um, is depend about used correctly. And, um, and does the JEP229 was conf uh, configured on the repository? And soon we will also have um, um, code coverage. And we will also have on that scoring implementation uh, contributing guide uh, presence because that's part of the repository configuration. So in uh, in this first idea is mostly adding new scoring and new probes, but it's also including those probes into scoring processes, uh, in, into scoring implementation, whether it's inside a dedicated score, uh, score implementation, a new one or an existing one, and explaining why it makes sense to have that joining a, uh, a different uh, a different one on an existing an existing one um what else can i say about that idea jake i think you covered it pretty well um 
I'll ask, you know, does anyone have questions about what Adrian just went through, either about the history of the project uh, or what's what's expected of this project? Uh, I have a question. Yes. So is the value, I mean, the plugin health value, it's going to be reflected in the update center or we are going to create a separate updating system which will be pulled by the plugin site? Okay. So, so that's more for the second idea. Oh, I see. Um, so let, let's table that question for the second part of the meeting. So we can have a specific discussion about the, how we display the, the scoring, but yes, uh, we will have a, a specific, there's a plan to have different ways to display the scores, the numero, the numeric values of the score for each plugin. And I have another question. Can we navigate back to the website of the... I can find it in my sea of tabs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jake is trying to break the world record of number of open tabs. Uh, yeah, yeah. so what is the difference between value and coefficient here? So uh, the value is, um, uh, is whether or not... Um, it, the, the, the coefficient is how important the scoring process, the scoring, scoring implementation is overall for the overall score of a plugin. So we can see that, for example, having a security issue, uh, um, not, not uh, yeah, having a security issue is pretty important for the score of a, of a plugin, which makes sense. And having a good repository configuration is half as important as the security uh, issue. The value is we, we have two scenarios for uh, security uh, implementation. It's a it's the score is the value is mostly um, a Boolean value. It's you do have security issues or you don't. So you either get a zero if you get if you have a security issue, or you get or you have a one out of one if you don't. Uh, for the repository configuration, it depends on whether the um, how many on yeah how, how many of the different aspects we want to see inside the repository are actually configured inside for the plugin. For the adoption, it's is the plugin marked as adopted? Yes or no? And then we are evaluating the last date the 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 last the the delay the the time sorry the time between the last commit on the repository and the last release of the plugin because you you, you can have plugins that have many commits that are never released and we want to assess that as well and so the 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 adoption is like the repository configuration the score is um the the value of the score depends on different elements. For the security and deprecation, it's Boolean. So it's zero or one. Yeah, another, uh, another way to think the coefficient is the weight, right? The weight yeah, of the, weight. the importance that we put on it, right? So, uh, so in the, oh, can I ask one more question? Yeah. Do I have Go one ahead. more question. Yeah. Then we have Judith who raised yeah. his hand. Go so, ahead, Sayed. Uh, when we uh, view the security aspect of a plugin, so correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, security issues are not disclosed publicly. No, no so, they are not. So how do we, I mean, uh, so get the yeah, correct... that, Okay, so that's a good question. So there's there's no, um, we, we are just assessing disclosed security issues. So a plugin could have an actual security issue that only the security board and the reporter of the and plugin maintainers know about but we don't and we won't be and the project is not assessing those issues we are assessing security issues that are public so there's a security advisory that was published and that is listing a security issue on us on one specific plugin and that security issue is not resolved so that shed, that's yeah. yeah so to shed some light uh, there for people who are unused uh, unused to that uh, process 
So normally security issues are not disclosed to give the time to the owner to fix them. And we give them a, an appropriate time. If we have no response or nobody is dealing with it at a certain time, we have to publish uh, the security. We don't explain how and where, we just say there is a security issue uh, logged on that. So it is- And, and that's what we call a security advisory. Exactly. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You. So you did, you, had, you have a question. Yeah, at the end, about this project, uh, is this going to be another plugin which your user can install in checkpoints, public uh, health score, or is it going to be something core feature, core feature uh, on which the user, uh, the end user will automatically know what the score it is? So how, you got my question, right? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, do you mean that is the plugin Else scoring pro project is part of Jenkins score or is it separate? Yeah, is, yeah. Is that... yeah. yeah that's okay, so I'm... no, the, the, pro the project itself live on its own. Um, it's separate from Jenkins. We will have, uh, we can, uh, we will, ha we have plans to have different ways to display the score to users and to plugin maintainers, either on the plugin site, which is the second idea uh, of for this year JSOC. And we have other, uh, other plans to also display those scores inside the, uh, uh, the plugin manager. So on, on the web, on the Jenkins instance, when you want to install a new plugin, uh, that is called the plugin manager. And you have the list of plugins that you have installed or you have available in the update center. And we, and we have plans to add the score value there as well. But the plug the project itself is not a plugin for Jenkins. It has a separate life of from Jenkins. Is just contributing to the uh, uh, else of the Jenkins ecosystem. Okay, got it. Another question about it is the foundation for this setup or say feature. Is it done, or is we are, or is we are going to make it from uh, from scratch? No, it it is done. Yeah, you. We already have a repository of code uh, that was uh, started last year with Diraj as a JSOC as well, and um, so on the yeah on the plugin page. Oh, we don't have the link to GitHub, but we have the link to the Git uh, issue tracker uh, on uh, to GitHub. So. Um, No, not that one. If you scroll just a little bit, yeah, this one. And so here you have the code of the project. Okay, got it. In the plugin health scoring, okay. Maybe update the project ID page. Any other questions on this project? Uh, I have another. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the weights of every probe, I mean, it might matter. I mean, it differs from person to person how much weight a person wants to give to a certain probe and how much to another. So how are we deciding for them? So it's, I mean, what's the decision process behind the scoring? So the um, weights and stuff, um, I mean, we did conduct a survey um, and I guess the, I don't know, I, what we tried to do is impose what the community thought was important to a plugin. Um, and we thought, you know, with some feedback from surveys that we conducted and other things um, that this was a proper distribution, at least to start with, right? As time goes on and best practices change, um, things will change, right? This is a living thing. And as best practices and things change, we'll change the values and the weights of certain things, right? But a lot of these things that we have right now make 
perfect sense, at least to me, and it, I think it should make sense to others, right? Um, if a plugin is deprecated, right, um, obviously that weight should be rather high, right? And same with adoption, right? If, if nothing's getting released or um, and nobody's there to, to do the work, right, then that's obviously a bigger problem <laughs> as well. And security is self-explanatory. Um, and you can see why the repository configuration might be weighted a little bit lower just because at the end of the day, um, these are what Jenkins community believes is best practices, but they are sort of nice to haves, if you will. Um, I don't know if that's the proper way to put it, but um, that's how I view it. Um, Adrian, do you want to shed any more light on that? Probably no, no, it, it, I, I totally agree with what you said. Uh, the repository configuration is mostly uh, good things to, uh, to have, but the most important thing is a plugin that is moving forward and is uh, uh, which is uh, which has um, a, a plugin maintainer and has no security issue. So in the end, um, not having a Jenkins file, for example, is not great, but it's not a problem for the plugin itself. It would be better with a Jenkins file, that for sure, uh, but to be honest, as soon as we have an active maintainer on a plugin, uh, on a plugin, we there's a, a Jenkins file that I can guarantee. Yeah, yeah and guarantee it, that. It, so yeah, and it might help. I mean, just to speak from the kind of user or product perspective here um, about the goals that we wanted to accomplish with this project, right? Obviously, the overarching goal is we want users to get better plugins, right? Um, we want users of Jenkins to have quality plugins. And we want to help them make decisions when picking a plugin to use, right? Because currently, um, without these scores, um, it takes a good a good hour out of your day, right? If um, you get asked to install a plugin, right? And it takes a good effort to decide whether a plugin is healthy or not. And what we've tried to do is encapsulate that thought process and put that in, you know, programmatically. Um, so we want users to have better plugins, and we want them to make be able to make decisions quicker and easier, right? About which plugins to install, right? Uh, you go and look for, you know, Kubernetes plugins. There's seven of them. Which one do I use? Which one's good? Which one, you know, obviously this doesn't answer, you know, anything functionally related if it's functionally going to do what you want. Um, so there's still a little digging. But then, of course, the, the second part is we want to help maintainers make better plugins, right? Um, and a lot of the times, whether, you know, you just adopted a plugin and you just became a new maintainer, um, this can serve as a little guidance as to, okay, what can I do to make this plugin better? I maintain this plugin and I just got a 65 out of 100, right? You know, what can I do to improve the plugin um, so more people use it and all that good stuff, right? So the two, the two main uh, beneficiaries of this are definitely going to be the end users and the maintainers of plugins. Uh, I'd like to uh, to ask a, a simple question, rephrasing or trying to reformulate. Uh, did I understand it correctly that we currently have a framework to collect the data, and this is what you have shown here, and this year's project is to add additional probes, additional measurements. Is that yes. correct? Yes, correct. And uh, there are ideas of probes that we could add, or are people free to propose new probes, or can you elaborate so, a little bit? So yes, there's ideas of probes, uh, but there's also, we, we welcome any, uh, any ideas that can come with the proposal for the JSOC project. Um, the, the, it's not mandatory to have your own idea. Uh, it's a good thing, but it's a welcome thing to to see probs that we might not have uh, think of, or uh, to just exert your the, the critical uh, thoughts uh, uh, against a, a plugin or against the project itself uh, to say this is already implemented, but I don't. I don't. I don't think this is the correct way to implement it. Okay, let, let's explain us why in the proposal, and we we can have a discussion. That's for sure. 
Um, if you have other ideas of probs, uh, things that seems interesting to you, or um, that that's also welcome. But you are, we already have uh, some ideas that are listed on the page. I yes, you did. It. I just would like to okay. uh, to add a, a little detail here. I strongly recommend that people interested in there watch very carefully the series of videos that were made about modernizing a plugin. I think it's referenced uh, somewhere uh, here, but uh, it, this is a good reference. So you, you know what are the things uh, to look for. Uh, anyway, you did, you can go ahead. Thanks, John. Uh, hi, Adrian. Can you explain me the part about the probes? So what are basically probes? Does they uh, specifically target a section of it, like if it's about its application or about the security issues, or does a single probe checks uh, every feature or part of the plugin and gives out the score? How does a probe works and what actually it is? Uh, can you give me a bit of idea about it in a few words? Uh, yeah. Um... Let, let's take an example. Let me share my screen and we can, and I can go to GitHub and explain uh, one prob if that's, uh, that can be useful. So let me see. Um, uh, folks, let's share this one. All right. So normally you can see an empty Firefox, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So let's go to. The Geeka page, and let's go to uh, this call the the props. So, if I understood your question correctly, you had in your question, uh, does the prob is responsible? The a prob is responsible to check one detail of a plugin. Right, right. Okay, so it, it's not we don't have one prob that is checking. Jenkins file presence, depend about configuration, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, it, we would have a, a very a thousand line or two thousand line or ten thousand line uh, class in the end. Um, here, what we have, uh, it's we we have a, a, an engine, the prob engine, which is already coded, which is uh, using all the probs that are implemented and found on the project, and they are then executed in. Uh, uh, Based on an order, so the order, the the order basically is that annotation, and we we, we can we can schedule them. Uh, thanks to that, not, not scheduling the time uh, timely manner, but in the order, uh, how they execute one after the other, and so the prob code is really uh, short most of the time. Here, for example, for the uh, uh, just uh, for the JEP two two nine, so we are checking the presence of a specific file. Uh, how do we know which file to check? It's basically you read you read the JEP two two nine documentation, and you you see that inside the GitHub dot GitHub workflows for uh, uh, file uh, folder, Correct. you have a, a CD file a cd workflow um on on the for jenkins and so basically what we are doing is just we have a repository of code we are looking inside the repository whether there is a github workflows folder and inside that folder we are checking whether or not we have the specific file so that's how it works for that one. If we look at another one, for example, uh, let's the known security vulnerability. It's a bit a bit more complex. The but you see, even though it's a bit more complex, it's still short because the code of the prod is those are those lines and only those lines. The others are just decorative. They, they are decorative to the prob to know whether the prob should be executed or not each time the prob engine is run, to describe what the prob is doing to the user interface, to um, know how to uh, how the prob result is represented inside the database. And so uh, 
when we are we we are executing at when we start the execution of the of the probe engine, we are gathering we are fetching the update center, which is published at the time that 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 is run, and that in that uh, update center we have a list of warnings. The list of warnings is basically just a, a, a map of plugin names and reason why there's a security advisory on them. So it can be, uh, uh, the, for each, uh, if I recall correctly, the, uh, the content of the map is the plugin name is a key and the content is an object that represents um, for a certain version of a plugin, can which can be a, a regex, uh, we have a security warning. And so what I'm doing, what what we did here is basically say, okay, so let's look at the security warnings we have, and let's uh, let's figure out whether the uh, the security warning apply to the current version of the plugin. If it's not applied to the current version of the plugin, which means the latest version available on the update center, it means the plugin doesn't have an active security warning. So there's no security issue on that plugin. Doesn't mean there never was. It just means that the latest version of the plugin don't have doesn't have any. And so, and in that case, we 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 just say um, if we don't find any any issue. It means it's fine. The plugin doesn't have any issue currently. And if we do find some uh, some security warnings for the plugin, it means uh, it's a failure because the plugin has a security issue. OK, got it. Thanks, Etienne. So each and every probe does its own job. And at the end, all of them gives a collective of warnings or a score, right? Yeah, the, the, they, they are. Um, for, so the, the, uh, the probe engine as you can, uh, is what is um, a, uh, running all the probes. And what we do is f we are going through all the probes and for each, uh, and for each uh, form, we are going through every plugin Normally we go through every plugin and we run on every plugin, all the probs on, on the specific order. And we are um, registering, we are um, persisting the result of the prob execution in the database inside a detail, a, a colon that is called detail, which is a JSON object. Okay, Adrian, yes, Jean-Marc. Adrian, would it, uh, we're going to pause the questions on this topic here. Yes. To have enough time to discuss uh, the uh, the uh, the user representation of that data, and the time left at the end, we can cover question on the on the two projects. Is that okay for you, Adrian? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, so you can go, or I don't know who's going to. Uh, Jake, do you uh, want to explain that that one? Yeah, of course. Um, I think this one is a little bit um, less complicated. I hope, um, but um, as you know, we have the plugin dash health um, site to go check individual plugins and things like that. Um, however, we want to make these scores more apparent, more digestible by end users and maintainers alike. Um, so one of the ideas is to um, display the scores on plugins.jenkins.io. Currently, um, if you go there and check out a plugin, we noticed there's quite a bit of late wasted space um, on these cards and we think um, with the wireframes that we'll go through in a second, this would be a great place um, to display the health scores of said plugins. Uh, and that's what you'll see in this wireframe here. Uh, you know, it's fit with, you know, uh, filtering based on those scores, right? Um, and of course, um, some explainers as to um, how the scores are produced and, you know, what goes into the scores, the different probes and all that stuff, right? Um, 
Second piece of that, more than just the composite score uh, on the, on the um, card itself when you first get to the site, um, want to do an explainer within each plugin, right? So essentially taking the results um, that you saw previously on plugin-health, um, essentially taking the results um, from here, right? You know, it has 16 pull requests, the Jenkins file is found, all that good stuff. The details of helping people understand, you know, the importance of the score, is it a valuable score, what goes into the score. Uh, we want to provide that in the details uh, of a plugin. Um, when you go here. So you can see in this wireframe, it lists out essentially what we have on uh, the page there, um, the details of the probes, the individual probes. Um, and I think that is the scope of this project. Um, there's other things we would like to do, but I think for the scope of this project, we'll leave it here um, at the displaying the scores of plugins.jenkins.io. Um, so essentially, more I think of it, converting the plugin health site that we have right now into um, viewable information on plugins.jenkins.io. Did I miss anything, Adrian? No. Um, the the the. I, I would just add that the contribution to that idea uh, would be partly on the. Plugins else scoring repository, but also on a on one or two other repository on GitHub, which are the plugin site and plugin site API, which are the projects that are used to um, generate the data for the plugin site API. And the plugin site repository is uh, the where the UI is made for the plugins.jenkins.io. So uh, in, in that project idea, yeah, contribution will be uh, in two different, uh, or three, potentially three different places. Um, what are the technologies? These uh, so the, yeah, the API, the API and um, plugin, uh, plugins uh, L scoring are in Java and a plugin um, site is in um, ReadJS. Okay, questions on this presentation and eventually on the on the, the other project that was discussed. We have uh, twenty minutes for questions. Uh, can we come back to my question about the update center? So, how is that supposed? I mean, what is the idea behind that? Um. So, um, the data of the plugins dot are not are uh, made from the plugin site API, not directly from the uh, update center. The um, content is coming from the update center, but not the API itself. So we can either have uh, the, um, the UI can either go by on its own, fetch the data from uh, plugins that Jenkins uh, pl um, plugins else scoring project because we have an API or we can have we can create new APIs to be able to see score or to have a score representation of a plugin or we can say no that's the problem of the plugin site API and then it means that the plugin site API will have to communicate with plugins else scoring before being able to propose the data to the UI uh, part of the project. Is that answering your question? Uh, yeah, that is answering my question. So I have another which is linked to this question. So I explored the plugin site, uh, uh, the repository, and I also contributed to it. So okay. I found one thing that the plugins are coming from Algolia, which is the search engine for that site. And uh, so what I'm guessing is happening that the plugin site API is feeding Algolia and from there the data is coming. So am I right or wrong? I'm not able to. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't fully understood what you said. C could you so, could you repeat? 
please. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So in the plugin site, uh, the uh, there is a search bar which is powered by Algolia, and the data is coming from Algolia. Yeah, that's right. Search by Algolia. So it's not coming directly from the plugin site API. And uh, so it's what it's a medium between the two, or what is? Happening? No, no. Here you are talking about the search engine. Yeah, the search engine. Yeah, but you you won't have to change the search the search engine. What we can you click on a, any plugin, Jake? What what we want here is to uh, here change that web page to have the score displayed on that web page. It won't. You won't touch. Uh, you won't touch uh, the uh, search engine. Okay. So just adding a tab to that yes. page, correct? Yes. Adding correct. adding a adding a, a tab to this page, but as well as essentially replacing the bottom section, like the shortened yes. list of contributors in this little periodic table square. This will also show the composite score. Um, so that the total score, the out of a hundred score that it got. Um, and then here we'll have a tab for health score that goes into the details of why it got that score. Okay. Algolia is only to filter uh, yeah. the, the screen, correct? Okay. Other questions? No question. Mm, hello. Yes. Who did? Hi, Sharma. So this, the difficulty of this project, I guess this should be beginner level, right? Or uh, what else do I need to learn? Like, I, I think according to me, this project has the difficulty of beginner level. And am I correct? Or do I need to learn more stuff? Like you said, the data analysis from data and data representation and all that skill part where I need to learn, right? Take, you're getting me, no? Okay. I'll so uh, if, I, if I understood correctly, uh, you mean, uh, is the data representation up to you? And in, if that case, if in that case, is that your responsibility to know how to represent the data? Is that what you mean? Yeah, kind of. And okay. another I... part I was, uh, I was asking that, I, I think according to me, I don't have much knowledge about it right now, but I think the difficulty for this project might be beginner level or is it intermediate? What do you think? Because according to what the, the required skill sets and knowledge it is written on the site now, according to me, uh, I, Java is fine. I know core Java. I worked on it in professional fields. Second part, you, uh, can you open that screen where uh, data skill sets are written? Which screen? Uh, on the projects to change On the, the uh, project community uh, part. No, no, where the project idea, project, project idea proposal, site. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of work has already been done. So the framework right. is already like this in place. One, skills, and study, skills to study and improve. Data yeah. analysis, I don't uh, This might be a big weak term for me. Can you explain what part I, of data analysis we are expecting here? Like just that one, you know, getting data from Git repositories and uh, showing it over here. I mean, uh, doing the all doing all that uh, process and showing the plugin health score over here. That is the only part of our data analysis now, or is it something else I'm missing? So on, on this project idea, you don't have uh, to score the score of the plugins, then fetching details on each plugin is already done. So the data analysis part here is about the, uh, where you find the scores uh, to display them on the uh, plugins.jenkins.io, how to uh, get them, how to transport them to the UI of pl uh, plugins.jenkins.io. I think that's what we meant by that. Okay then, okay then, got it. I want to add something here that uh, I think yes. so data analysis means uh, uh, like uh, uh, scroll up. Oh, sorry. 
uh, more yeah uh, yeah yeah here more up yeah in this filter part i think uh, we have to add a, one more option of sort so i think we have to uh, implement a data analysis part is here according to me like yeah, how to be able are, to filter the results yeah for well. filtering the results Yep, that's a good point. Well, aren't we going to use the existing filtering technique? Oh, no, yeah. not because we're going to filter on uh, on the scores, right? Yeah, I want to see okay, only good point. B, B plugins or whatever we decide, right? If we give it a letter grade or just the, yeah, the good point. Yeah. Eighty out of hundred. And uh, since it's coming from a different center, I mean, there's there will be some sort of changes in the implementation as well. That's what I think. On on the API part, uh, either it's inside plugins uh, site API or not. Um, I wouldn't say that fetching the data is part of what I would call data analysis. Uh, but once you have the data on the UI, then you can have some um, uh, implement in, in interpretation of, of it. Mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, if you scroll just a little bit, Jake, we can see on this on when you go to a specific plugin and on this else of that specific plugin, uh, some data are uh, numeric values, others are dates, others are um just booleans uh and so it means uh you you won't have the same data representation for each one of them yeah. well the term data analysis can be understood in different ways depending yes. on the world you are in so this is not big data or or yeah big no statistics no yeah. or things so, like that sorry it's more data uh, sorry we yeah, yeah we we don't have the buzzword uh big data here uh, we are just uh, using, we are uh, just a bit over 2,000 plugins. We are far from having uh, something that we could call big data. Does it answer your question, Harsh? I think it's Harsh that asked the question. Yeah, it's all clear. Okay. Perfect. Good. Any other question or other points that are unclear? Until now, Iraj, do you have any words of wisdom or any additions to this conversation? So you join this call. And if you're not familiar, Diraj uh, was the contributor last summer that worked with Adrian and I to get the architecture and get the foundation uh, for this project. So. Yep. And he's still willing to work on the project. So that's a good I think sign. That, uh, that's a good sign. Yes. <laughs> Definitely a good sign because uh, the project is very interesting. Uh, and since we started this last year, uh, the idea is extremely, you know, creative and very useful as well. Since we got to know now, all of us know about it, uh, the description of what how we are going to be helping, who we are going to be helping. So this is what uh, caught my attention last year. And that's how I started and I got interested. And uh, during my GSOC period, uh, Adrian and Jake were extremely kind to mentor me. And that's how we set the foundation of this project and started coding stuff. And uh, that was the most challenging part, to be honest, and the most interesting part as well, uh, because it helped me to learn more about Java and the system design as well. And those two things are extremely useful to me uh, even now. And uh, after the project, I still contributed a few, I think one or two pull requests. And uh, it's because uh, I'm also doing full-time job, so trying to balance things. Uh, but I'm extremely interested to be part of this project even now and in future as well, because the reason is same as I said when I started speaking is that this project is extremely interesting and it has a very bright future. So 
this is why I came back this year as well, just to help Adrian and Jake, just to, uh, you know, help uh, with any questions that any potential contributors might be having or anything that I can be of help. So that is what my aim is to be here. So if you have any questions as a potential mentors, uh, sorry, potential contributors, then feel free to reach out to us on the Gita channel. Uh, we would be very, very happy to help. I want just to add a little thing. I do the sales pitch for uh, these two projects is uh, in my previous life, uh, I've been managing a Jenkins, uh, a big Jenkins system, helped also customers managing uh, Jenkins. Uh, this would have saved quite a lot of energy uh, just to have a simple dashboard to know when you have to do as a system administrator, the decision, uh, can I use this plugin? Plugins is the power of Jenkins. It, it brings, it really creates Jenkins. Jenkins is a butler that serves artifacts, serves things. And the plugins are key to that. It serves features provided by plugins. Plugins sometimes have been written like a fire and forget. Oh, I wrote this in a weekend and there it is. And then I move to something else. Are you able to put all your production on such a plugin? What is the quality of it? And this is where a, a lot of effort is required to, uh, to make these decisions. And it's scary. I, I've, I've been talking to admins. I had it too. And so, oof, uh, can I trust this one? And this is a very useful tool, an important tool to help uh, these administrator. And also, as Jake explained, it's also a very good guideline for people maintaining plugins to know where they need to do the housekeeping to keep these uh, up to date. Uh, and that. so it's, it's, this is really why well, all the projects of these years are very useful, but uh, and I can already tell this you, I'm here, already using, I'm already using these plugin house scores in my day-to-day -day job. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's already useful. <laughs> but we need, we need to get more to eat, to it, more substance. We need to, to, it's, it's only starting. It's already useful, but here without the user interface, uh, uh, well, you really need to be a specialist to, to start using it. And, and you can imagine with something like this, I mean, the first, you know, we want more probes, right, as John Mark said, to, to beef it up, because the last thing we want is no faith or a loss of faith in these numbers, right? I think having them uh, get a wide array of data points uh, only feeds to its power, but um, to its credibility as well, right? We want people to trust these numbers, and we want people to... Um, to, to put some weight behind it, right? And then actually have some value. Um, so that's an important part of this. I have one thing I leave a few moments if somebody wants to jump in with a question. Uh, I have another question. Yeah, so right. so uh, what we are seeing is that we are searching the GitHub repositories of those plugins to get the data out of it. So can these plugins also be located on GitLab or nope. other SCMs? Uh, no, they, they are not. The, uh, it, there's a rule uh, written in Jenkins ecosystem saying that for a plugin to be um, um, uh, promoted, published, uh, promoted, published by the community, it needs to be inside the Jenkins CI organization in GitHub. That is not true for all plugins. There's old plugins where when that rule wasn't applied or wasn't followed very carefully, uh, some plugins are located outside of the Jenkins CI organization in GitHub. But overall, all plugins are in GitHub and, um, and normally inside the organization. 
uh, just to put some uh, uh, light on well, measurement on what you just said, we are not only looking at the source code, so not all the probes are about the repository. Uh, some which are not implemented and are in the idea are uh, to list the number of uh, tickets or issues for a plugin that are open. And that is potentially in GitHub, but also potentially in, in the Jira, in issues.jenkins.io. So we are not looking only at the repository. We are not only looking at the code. We are all, we are looking at a plugin overall. So even, even the number of installation, it's not really looking at the code per se. We are looking yeah. at, is it used? Yeah, yeah, I, I like to think of it, yeah, in like in two two buckets, right? That things really fall into the ones on the code side, right, and the repository side, and then ones more on the maintainer side of things or the activity side of things related to the people involved, right? Um, there's two two kind of buckets that we're looking at, um, and yeah, getting data from more places will will only be helpful. Um, okay. Jake, I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry for, for that. We have two minutes left. I just would like to uh, conclude. So first, any questions that left or and there are probably a heap uh, of them, use the Gitter channel or community.jenkins.io to discuss with the people. Um, next step is so the, the next important uh, thing that you need to do now is really understand uh, what the project is about. And we expect you to produce, um, I'm checking for the date here. So um, we're talking here for beginning of April. So you have complete month of March to work on your proposal, your application. So this document is uh, uh, aimed at describing what you can do, who you are, and why you are the right candidate to work on that project idea. So you need to show that you understood the problem, you come with experience or uh, with ideas or uh, um, novel ideas that you have a good grip. What we will be looking at during the month of April is uh, what are what is the likelihood that contributors have to complete the project. Uh, in the assigned uh, time and eventually uh, uh, achieve uh, stretch goals or so it's not limited to just the initial scope. Scope can, uh, can change, uh, but that you're the right person, that you will achieve the, uh, the goals, that you will be able to work together with the mentors uh, um, to make it a successful summer. Uh, it is very important. Experience has shown that uh, the sooner you start working on that document and uh, making the document available for review, uh, the better. Because once you've submitted the document, if uh, the mentors, the mentors are going to review all the documents, so all everybody, I will read all the documents. Uh, if at that moment, I don't understand what this contributor wanted to share. He's not making his point correctly, or he could have presented it another way. Then it's too late, and you missed the the opportunity. So uh, make your document available. The community is there to help you, not to judge your work. We want everybody to learn something from that experience and uh, to grow. I'm one minute above time, I'm sorry, especially for the people in Asia. It's very late, I apologize for that. We are on the on, on the hour on my side. Ah, uh, okay, I, I had one minute, so I need to <laughs> check my, uh, my clock here. 
So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to conclude here this very, very interesting and fruitful um, uh, uh, meeting. Thank you very much everybody to have attended for the very good uh, questions. And I'd like to thank you also Adrian and Jake and um, Adraj for uh, their explanations and uh, being there to, to support. So let's go. We're, uh, if necessary, on project level, uh, uh, you can organize other online meetings. So I will not organize always. Oh, we had this startup uh, meeting here. So request, organize. Don't forget, everything is public. No one-to-one -one, uh, communication. We want to be fair uh, with everybody. It's a competition. OK. We're Thanks. good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. For attending the Have meeting. a good Thank evening, you. rest of the day, and see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Look forward bye -bye. to reading you. your proposals. Bye. Yes. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you a lot. Bye. bye.